a lot of examples and I don't think there's anything. There may still be a couple of them around, but uh, that was uh, one like that. That wasn't the one that ran there. Uh, ran there. So there was a self repair car, and that got you from point A to point B. And you may have eaten at the Sackets Harbor Station. It's now the group So, some railroads were planned, and we'll see this one on the maps a little later on. The Sackets Harbor and Saratoga. Going right across the middle of the Adirondacks and down to Saratoga. Those folks and the folks who built the, uh, the Northern Railroad, we'll talk about that as well, had a, an eye on not New York City, but Boston for trade with the North Country. Uh, the Second Harbor in Saratoga never happened. The Northern did, we'll talk about that. And uh, there may have been missing pieces, but uh, not, it wasn't there. The Ogden River, Clayton, Rome, built to compete with the Utica Black River, which we'll talk about a little more depth in a little bit. They had an interesting uh, concept, and that was to do their entire grading, their entire roadbed, before they laid any rail. Well, that, logistically, that's got a problem because you can't haul stuff up to work on the railroad unless you got a railroad to haul it on. So one thing that they did build, though, is uh, near Houseville, I think it's on the East Road. East Road is the thing. Uh, yeah, it's just near Houseville, nonetheless. Uh, they did a 1,200 foot long cut, 20 feet deep, which is still visible if you know where you're looking for it. And uh, that was later used by the Glenfield and Western, a logging railroad that ran up on, onto Tug Hill. There were some issues with that, uh, with snow, and we'll talk a little bit about snow later on, and I'll mention that again. The Northern Railroad, in its last iteration, it was known as a, it was part of the Rumble Railroad, ran across the northern part of the state, through Moira and over to Augensburg, across Lake Champlain at the northern end. That was, uh, that was part of the whole idea to get traffic from the Boston area over this way. Now, Augensburg was significant because that was the end of navigable waters at the time from the Great Lakes. After that, you ran into the rapids. Only, only the strong survived in the, in the rapids. So if there was traffic for the lakes, they could make it up and down the river okay, uh, from Augsburg down to Lake Ontario. And points beyond once they get the, uh, the canal built uh, at Welland. And it, say it ended in Augsburg, parts of it are still in existence, and but most of it's gone. You can still see the bridge pilings on uh, Lake Champlain. So let's talk about the water tower in Rome. First railroad into the north, into this part of the North Country. Came up with the idea in 1835, uh, early in the railroad boom idea. They started building it in 1848. Had to raise the money, had to get everything together, get all the people to sign off on everything. It was completed at Cape Vincent in April of 1852. There we go. Read my own, uh, whatever it is. Uh, they actually built that fairly quickly compared to what we're going to see with the Utica Black River. Ran through Rome, through Camden, up to Richland, and then uh, up to Watertown, from Watertown over to Cape Vincent. And you can easily find most of that if you drive down Route 13. You'll, you'll cross that several times and you can see where the road bit was in a number of places. From Rome to Richland, that was abandoned in stages, back to Camden. And then back out from there, and, and there's still a little bit of roll, but not much. Uh, Camden had handled uh, it was the wire factory there. But that's all. Everything's gone from now. The line from Richland to Watertown is still very much in use. And that connected with the guy did put the Syracuse and Northern in here, but uh, when Syracuse and Northern was built out of Syracuse, that connected to this line at uh, at Alaska and Richland, and that's how the trains get to the North Country now. And the line from uh, yeah, the right away from Watertown to Cape Vincent, you can still pick most of that out. It's actually being used by Dan, the Development Authority of North Country, for a water line now, for the most part. And uh, many of the fills and the bridges are still very, very visible, especially between <coughs> Chimot and Brownville. And in Brownville is the only, supposedly the only cemetery in the entire country that has a railroad or had a railroad running through it. That's 
That's why there's a big gap in the, in the cemetery if you go look at the Brownville Cemetery. The last place that the rails came up uh, was that that served the uh, LP gas plant there in uh, Glen Park. So it's all been straight rail now, and they just go straight on through. Well, there's the first Cape Vincent station, and uh, did just fine until it blew down in Gale of uh, 1895. And apparently, that was quite the storm. Unfortunately, there were people at the station, and several lost their lives. And they just uh, that was facing toward the lake, of course, the wind was probably coming off the lake, and and just, just completely blew the station away. So, but you can see the station and replace it even now. It's in the marina down there in Cape Vincent. And that was an international gateway. That was the first place that the rails reached this part of the country and the water. A lot of uh, ships, even though play, or Cape Vincent didn't have their breakwater yet, so a lot of ships came in there for trade. A lot of grain moved, probably some coal. And I mentioned the, uh, the steamer that laid to the lake, and that was a big thing on, on the river. And the lake was the uh, steamers that ran back and forth. The Lady Lake ran between Cape Vincent and Clayton, or Kingston, rather. And uh, part of one of the things I read, they had stay rooms on the upper level, which was unusual for the steamers in, in this area. All right, going north from Watertown. We've gotten into water, got into Watertown with the Roman Watertown. Uh, going north, they started uh, up north the uh, Potsdam and Watertown, they, or Potsdam Railroad. They wanted a connection to the world, and they connected to the Northern Railroad at uh, Potsdam Junction, which you now know as Norwood. And uh, that's uh, actually the, that's part of the railroad that still exists from that line because it runs from Norwood over to Eigensburg. That's still active. The Potsdam and Watertown, local funding, as I mentioned before. Uh, these were folks who knew what they had and they wanted to uh, wanted to take advantage of it. The resources in the North Country had not been tapped. Uh, if you wanted to get your milk you know, products out, your cheese or whatever, it came, they went by wagon. That was the only way to get it out. Butter and everything else all had to go by wagon. Anything you had to bring in had to come in by the wagon. Uh, once the Roman Watertown was finished, you could come at least as far as Watertown, but then you were stuck. And the control by the uh, Watertown, or the Watertown in Rome, yes, that happened in 1860. And at that time, it became the Rome Watertown in Ogden, which was an industry for many, many years. Let's move over to the Utica and Black River Railroad. Well, as I suggest, it started in Utica. This was something of a competition for the Rome Watertown in Ogdensburg. They first started that in 1853. It took them until 1857 to finally get tracks to Boonville. And then things kind of lagged. They didn't run too much. They were running two trains a day, one north, one south. They doubled that after several years, so they were running two trains a day, passenger trains. And of course, any freight that they handled. They reorganized it in 1860 as the Utica and Black River, which was known as until its demise. Finally, in 1868, they got the Lowell it took them four years to get from Lowellville to Carthage. It only took them a year to get from Carthage all the way over to Clayton. But they had help with that. And that's where the uh, whole story comes from. The Clayton Threesome, as I said, I didn't know this railroad existed until I found it in, the, in, the, uh, in my research. And it was built by some local folks, again, who wanted a connection to the world. And they built the road from Clayton to Theresa. I'm pretty sure it connected at Rivergate, or <coughs> as in the trail, well, that's uh, just south of Theresa. The, uh, can't read my own slides here. There we go. They never ran their own trains, as you'll see in a moment. Uh, operation fell in the Utica and Black River, which leased it. So they built the tracks, but they never ran their own train. You won't find a, a ticket for the Clayton and Theresa Railroad or anything else. You can find your pictures of cars or whatever. 1886, they were gone, taken over completely by the Utica and Black River. And as I said, Huckover's book never mentions the Clayton and Theresa, which is surprising because that was pretty much that's the authoritative tone on railroads in the North Country. And he doesn't even know it's there. A friend of mine works in railroad legal. 
was out in Denver, Colorado, and he pointed me to uh, a resource, Poor's Manual of Railroads, and this is the 1880 edition, and lo and behold, there's the claim in Theresa. And when you look at rolling stock, you'll notice it says, none owned. So they never actually ran a train of their own. Okay, the Augsburg claim in Rome, I mentioned that before. Again, it was a competition for the Utica and Black River, supposed to be. They were going to build up on the hill. Utica and Black River built up the Black River Valley, very nice uh, alignment there, and uh, nice low levels, easy grades, and everything else. Uh, the Augsburg claim in Rome was going to go a little higher. Uh, they actually, as I said, they passed near Houseville. They were going to pass near Houseville, and probably around Martinsburg. And then it allowed go from there. Not a lot more grades going on there, and it wasn't uh, it wasn't pretty. And because they their logistical plan wasn't exactly the best, I just imagine let's grade the entire road from here to someplace else, and then we'll pave it later on. Uh, now you pave it as you go, but you still find evidence in the line. There are several culverts. Uh, Russ Nelson, uh, abandoned railroads, was his uh, his thing. And he's found several culverts uh, from that railroad that were built uh, before they were got around, like, when they were graded the line. And I mentioned that walk, that big cut near uh, near Houseville in Lewis County. And of course, it all went over the New York Central and Hudson River, later just the New York Central Railroad. Uh, the Roman Wartown and I were come over the Utica Black River on April 16, 1886, and they were now providing service to the North Country via two different routes. New York Central took over the Rome Waterhound in Augsburg in 1891, five years later. And from there, as they say, the rest, as they say, the rest is history. The passenger service nearly system line was gone by 18, or 1965. And still some mainline trains running uh, until the uh, Penn Central debacle in uh, 1968. The last freight train in Clayton ran in 1972. At that time, I'm not sure what they were picking up unless they were picking up rails because there wasn't a whole lot left in Clayton in 1972 to, to serve as, as industry. I wasn't living here at the time, but if somebody's got other information, let me know. Bluegrass. 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 Okay. And cars that once upon a time come in, yeah. but later years didn't. Actually, you mentioned bluegrass, and, and to jump ahead some railroad archaeology, if you look at the bluegrass, at the lumber sheds, some of the beams underneath some of the lumber sheds are rails. And then the same way I think with Brooks, this was on the other side of town, they would send trucks over to meet Very possible, yeah. yeah. We'll, see, we'll see maps of what it looked like here shortly uh, in Clayton. There was a lot of track over that corner of town and a number of sidings. So. so, that's not very easy to see, but that's New York State and the railroads therein in 1855. Closer look at it, and you can see I mentioned the Sackett's Harbor in Ellsburg, that's there. Uh, you can see the lines going north. And Black Clayton, was it there yet? No, it wasn't. That was pretty sparse, and you can see Tug Hill down there at the bottom. Here's an 1861 image. And this one now, you can see the blue line there going across the Adirondacks. That was the Sackett's Harbor in Saratoga. So that was where it was supposed to be. Rather interesting route. It was actually going to pass near Old Forge on the way across. But uh, it would be interesting to see if that had been built. What would, uh, what would be the case now? That was before the you know, blue line for the Adirondack Park, so they wouldn't have any trouble building it. So, Larry, I guess it. Uh, uh, Kate Vincent had a train before Clayton? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that was that was the original terminus of the Roman Watertown. The Roman Watertown didn't end in Watertown, it ended at Cape Vincent. So uh, I have to go back through the slides. But yeah, that was what, 1853 or so there that uh, Cape Vincent had the railroad. And uh, again, that was the, the, the first place I could find that would get that, that gave them an the, the easy route for one thing, uh, to get to the river and the lake. Uh, coming up to Clayton was a little more problematic. Uh, you look at the, the route, if you look at just draw a line across between Clayton and, uh, 
and Watertown, and, and there's some interesting profiles in there. Yeah. The thing, I'm a caretaker for a family out in the islands, and they owned one of the train cars that would be, be the personal car. Yep. And uh, I try to pick their brain and all that I can. And the big thing they said when they came up, they'd have to change engines in Philadelphia before they came to Clayton. And I've never figured out if it was a different tracks or they need to step down to a smaller engine. Probably a smaller engine. Uh, without digging into uh, some files that I don't have access to, uh, odds are that, that that was, some portion of that was a much lighter rail. Rail is, is measured by how many pounds it weighs per yard. So three feet of track, uh, some of the I think, well, we went back and looked at that and said how much the uh, Clayton Theresa was, and that was like 50 pounds. Mainline tracks out there today, you know, on the Syracuse and watch the trains come through, they're a 132 pound rail. So it's much more substantial rail. A lot of early railroads were built, and they're also built with uh, rail that may not have been as metallurgically sound, there's cast iron rail and stuff like that. So odds are that was the problem was they used to, uh, in Philadelphia, they, from Philadelphia over, and it may have not even just been Philadelphia, it may have been from uh, Theresa over, from Rivergate over, it may have been the problem, yeah, but they, it was easier to change train or change locomotives in Philadelphia than it was at, uh, at Rivergate, because there's no place at Rivergate to do it, there's just a switch there. And then once one time, wasn't there like 14 or 16 trains a day came into Clayton? We'll talk about that. Oh, okay. So there's uh, there's the North Country in 18, uh, 1860, 61. All right, there were stations, obviously. Anybody around long enough to recognize this one, aside from pictures? Watertown. Absolutely. Uh, right behind the uh, right behind the hotel, and if you've seen pictures of the interior, that was a gorgeous building. Really gorgeous building. Uh, trains from the north and the east came through here. A lot of, uh, saw an article about some college students that uh, were talking about their trip through through Watertown on their way to wherever they were going. And uh, let's see, there's no track there left anymore. That's the JB Wise parking lot. <laughs> Bombell had two stations. The curb 